to start with the next presentation. It comes from uh, Lexical Computing, Jan Kraus and Piet Suchomel to talk about the topic and genre classification of large English web corpus. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's nice to see uh, so many people here and it's actually the first time in my life I'm wearing the headset, so I hope uh, <laughs> I'll be able to deliver the presentation. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, as, uh, as been said, it's a work of Jan Kraus and uh, me uh, for lexical computing on uh, topic and genre classification of a large English web corpus. Uh, so as a, a motivation uh, for, for our work, uh, we need to understand what's inside web corpora. Uh, as you know, uh, there are rich metadata in uh, traditional corpora or corpora compiled from known sources like books, newspapers, magazines, uh, or uh, corpora compiled from like heavily uh, manually checked data or well-known sources but that's not the case of uh, web corpora that we make. Uh, and uh, uh, our users and we uh, have been frequently asking which texts are inside. What is, the, what is uh, for example, the author of text, date of publish, publishing, uh, language variety, or the two uh, points uh, on the bottom of the list, uh, which I'm going to talk about uh, today. Uh, we also had questions like, uh, do you provide a business and finance corpus? So there is uh, a demand uh, of uh, uh, topic corpora. Uh, so what, uh, what can we, or what we did about that? Uh, we uh, uh, assigned uh, topics and genres to large websites in the corpus and get these, uh, these uh, charts uh, displayable in Sketch Engine uh, for users of the corpus. So now we know at least about a portion of the corpus, as you can see, as you can see, 82% of the tokens in the corpus is still unknown, but the rest of the corpus uh, we know fairly well what what is the genre of the text or what is the topic of the text in this case. So this is what the users can display when using the corpus. And that's, uh, that holds for all new corpora that are, uh, all new web large corpora that are uh, being made and published in Sketch Engine. And we also provide uh, topic specific and genre specific locations in these uh, newly uh, recently created corpora and I prepared uh, an example for you to explain. Uh, so uh, for example this is a word sketch of a known protocol which occurs uh, nearly two million times in the corpus. Uh, it's a big web English corpus from 2021. And uh, you can see two grammatical relations, the modifiers or the collocations which modify uh, the noun protocol and nouns modified by protocol. And uh, you can see, uh, for example, that the collocation routing is used especially in technology context or in science context, while uh, treatment protocols uh, are used in texts labeled as science or health. And the third uh, example, collocation protocol droid, that's something you know from Star Wars, which, is, uh, which belongs to topic culture and entertainment according to our, uh, our topic scheme, which I'll show you later, uh, and genre fiction. It's also uh, present in some computer games probably. So that's why this one is here. Uh, so this is uh, what we are able to provide now and uh, now about how we did it. Uh, so uh, our goal uh, looked like uh, difficult uh, because we wanted to cover a large part of a web corpus with only a small human effort 
since we like to do, and we already do this for all uh, large languages newly added to Sketch Engine, or all large corpora added to Sketch Engine, uh, we need uh, an annotation scheme and uh, overall methodology to, to uh, achieve this um, uh, in an efficient way. Uh, so we work with this uh, uh, assumption of a website homogeneity uh, and uh, it says that the all pages from a website share the same topic and genre and uh, uh, we uh, or one of our uh, colleagues found that this holds in 92% of cases when the uh, an, a human expert annotator of websites was sure that uh, the topic or genre is present in the website. So not, not in 92% of all websites, but only those where we were sure to assign a label. And uh, now, um, more detail about, about the, uh, the annotation scheme. Uh, so we rank websites by token count in the corpus and select just top 3,000 sites in the case of English or a small number for small languages. And uh, we uh, manually look at uh, sentences and website land landing pages just from these most contributing sites. So by, by uh, this we achieve a large coverage of, of the corpus, even though we look at only the small, a small number of sites. Uh, we can also split site documents by frequent path prefixes, such as slash sports or slash culture. So this way we can deal with uh, multi-topic sites or multi-channel maybe, or rather topic, multi-topic sites. Uh, and we spend time checking the website content proportionally to its rank. So we devote most time checking the largest sites, so maybe the top five, top 10, uh, and less time checking uh, the, the rest. So uh, this way, uh, the manual effort uh, carried out by a human expert is uh, reduced uh, to minimum or just to what's the most efficient. Uh, yeah, the, the person checks the host name and uh, the landing page of the website and uh, concordance of random sentences in Sketch Engine. And uh, uh, assigning a topic and a genre and checking the quality of the website is uh, all done at the same time in one pass of the list of uh, largest websites. Uh, some more detailed description of, uh, of, of the checks are on this slide. Uh, so we check uh, long phrases or uh, suspicious uh, f phrases, suspicious names or suspicious TLDs in, in the host name. Uh, we also check uh, if, for example, if uh, there are uh, too many language mutations of the website. So this, there's a high chance of machine translation. And in that case, more time is uh, spent with checking the website. Um, yeah. And concerning the topic and genre, um, the, the person who uh, looks at the content, looks for lexical or syntactic features, typical for a recognized text type. So um, for example, uh, if there's a lot of uh, narration in the past tense, then it could be a fiction. Um, uh, but most importantly, when uh, the annotator isn't sure, uh, no label is assigned to a website. So that's, that's how we try to achieve high precision at the cost of recall. And uh, the rest of the corpus uh, can be uh, annotated by a classifier trained on the human data. That's a uh, standard way how to do it. 
Uh, so now about uh, topic and genre selection. Uh, so uh, we thought about a data-driven approach or approach um, to prescribe classes, and uh, we inspired were inspired by several other sources. Uh, some of I think the, the the work of Serge Sharoff was mentioned in the first in the first uh, invited talk here. Uh, I'll I would like to name a web directory with 15 classes uh, called curly.org, which formerly was called demos.org. Maybe you know that before the before the web search engines improved, we had uh, web directories. Uh, so if people were able to label websites and put them in the directory, then we should be able to do the same thing. And uh, that's, uh, uh, that's what's the uh, basis for our approach. We, uh, have, uh, we would like to include only uh, text types that we're able to agree on. And uh, uh, some of uh, the uh, topics or genres proposed by others um, were difficult for us to agree on, so we didn't include them in, in our uh, topic or genre scheme. Uh, we have to have enough corpus evidence, so in, in, other, words, in other words, the uh, documents bearing the signs of the topic or genre have to be in the data represented a lot. And uh, we also uh, think about the label of the, of the category, if it's uh, comprehensible by, uh, by the users of Sketch Engine. So it must be uh, ideally a single uh, easy word uh, for which people can imagine what, what it means, which documents they expect would be labeled by this this word. And as I said, we prefer precision over recall. <coughs> so uh, these are the uh, final topic labels in um, Corpus and 101021. That's the, the large English web corpus. And uh, as you can see, I, I left uh, the red colored words uh, to show um, for which cases inspired by uh, by uh, Christina Koppel's work uh, were not enough evidence in our data here, so that's why they weren't included in the in the uh, in the final list of genres or, or topics. Uh, so, uh, in in the summary row, you can see uh, we uh, out of the three thousand websites checked by the person. We uh, had 877 labeled by a topic. And this is the same table for uh, genres. So 621 websites got a genre label. Uh, yeah. And uh, furthermore, uh, we had four students of applied linguistics uh, which were coordina coordinated by Giovanna Donzelli, so thank, thanks to Giovanna, uh, which uh, uh, did the same as our expert annotator, uh, but just after a short uh, introductory um, say course or train training, uh, they just were explained what to do. They read a, a short annotation manual and uh, then they annotated. Uh, sorry, something about 1,000 or more websites in 20 hours each person. And uh, we uh, worked just with those cases where at least three or four students uh, had an agreement uh, because, uh, as, as I said, those labels where people can't agree are not interesting for us. Uh, 
So we had uh, four or 500 uh, websites labeled by them. And uh, uh, these labels were in agreement with our expert in 89% of cases for topic labels and 86% of cases in, uh, in the case of genre labels. Uh, so to, again, to uh, say what's, uh, what's the, like the biggest uh, advantage of this approach, uh, uh, the, uh, the procedure is time efficient. Uh, and no expert linguistic or computer skills are required. And uh, even no expert language skills are required, even though we cooperate with uh, native speakers in other languages for Cobra in other languages. Uh, we are able to do uh, the work reasonably well, well ourselves uh, because of checking the live site and using uh, machine translation of sentences. Uh, if you see images of sports, uh, of a football match, uh, and images of uh, sportsmen or sportswomen on, on a website, uh, you don't have to understand the language. You don't have to be able to read the script even. Uh, so to conclude, um, we have developed a semi-manual and cost-efficient approach to topic and genre annotation of web corpora. And uh, it was applied to a large English web corpus uh, covering 14% of tokens by 20 topics and 18% of tokens in the corpus by six genres. Uh, and uh, as for the uh, lexicographers, uh, these uh, metadata in the corpus enable identification of topic specific and genre specific collocations. So, thank you. Thank you so much for the talk. Are there any questions or comments in the audience? Yes. Yeah, thank you, just one comment. Perhaps um, you should um, also consult the work by, done by Jesse Egbert and, and Doug Biber on, on English web. They also did this manual annotation. They used the Mechanic Turk that and uh, I think there are two major takeaway messages from their research and one is that most of the web pages are register-wise mixed so the, the homogeneity assumption is like uh, uh, yeah questioned uh, and the second uh, second uh, uh, thing they they found out is that blog as such is not to be considered as genre, but mostly as a medium. So it, mm -hmm. when something is blog, it does not really mean that it has the genre characteristic. It's just, you know, the way how people, you know, say things or write things. So perhaps these two things. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yes, I agree, blog is a medium. Um, Maybe uh, maybe the reason why we included this category was that uh, it can be easily identified. Any more questions? Not from the web. Uh, can this topic genre annotation be implemented in uh, DIY uh, corpora. Uh, excuse me, which corpora? D. Uh, uh, do it, do it yourself, corpora. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, well, uh, you would have to uh, identify topics and genres yourself, and then uh, you would be able to see in word sketches, for example, the the collocations. Uh, with indications of, uh, of topics and genres they occur in. Uh, so if the question was about if it's possible, uh, yes. And if the question was about if it's done automatically, so no for uh, user-made corpora. Any more questions? 
Fraglich. There's some um, topics and genres. They're a property of the text. Um, in lexicography, we usually assign the main labels to the words. So, um, and your main audience here are lexicographers. Do you think these topical um, classifications can be straightforwardly used as possible domain labels? Or what do you see the application there? Maybe you mean do you mean this? Um, this topic and genre labels. I think the application is to separate uh, collocations of the head word by uh, by uh, text types. And so uh, user of a dictionary could be interested in uh, the proper collocations in their uh, area, in their domain. Do I see any more hands? Uh, I, I, I wanted to ask, what is this? Um, on one of the slides you had multi-topic, I think, was it? Uh, it it's URL-based classification, right? So what is this multi-topic? Mm, you probably mean yeah. this? Yes. Um, this is uh, a label that uh, says uh, the annotators weren't, weren't able to assign a single topic. Uh -huh, I see. Because I remember when I did the classification, then I also, um, like, let's say some blogs, they do talk about specific topic, for example, sports or, I don't know, skiing or riding a bike or whatever. So these are, this, this, this can be classified. I think like blogs can be like the wider, uh, like a genre and sports is the, is the topic of the blog. But uh, some web pages, like um, what was it? Like the website of the Ministry of Education, I would say is both maybe education and government and and uh, and um, what was it? Government and uh, I don't remember what it was. Anyway, uh, so do you mean that when I as when I would assign two topics to one web page, then it would it would be multi-purpose, uh, multi-topic? In, in Sketch Engine? Uh, excuse me. Uh, for no, uh, uh, when, I, when I assign, when, I, when I'm doing the manual checking of the links and I s see that this web page has both like two different topics and I assign two topics to that web page, does that in Sketch Engine then mm -hmm. is it multi topic? Well, it, it depends on the like purpose of the corpus and uh, it, it's a decision to make to make and uh, in this corpus uh, apart from from the multi topic uh, topic which uh, which in effect maybe shouldn't have gotten into the into the final corpus uh, we don't want multiple labels because uh, it makes things more uh, complicated yeah. so so in fact, uh, at least how, uh, how I how I'd design it, uh, most of the multi-topic sites should be in this part of the corpus, which was seen by an annotator, but uh, uh, the person didn't decide where to put where to put uh, the uh, the website. It's uh uh, surprising to me to see that the 85% is uh, non -class uh, not classified. That's quite a large percentage. Yes, so that's because we aim aimed for high precision at the cost of recall. Yeah. Uh, any questions? No? Then, okay, then uh, we'll take a five-minute break, and thank you a bit for uh, the presentation. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>